Hi guys, welcome to Simply Scuba. So this is our very first well, our first new style Q&A, sort of community Q&A. Uh, you guys asked for it, you wanted to basically ask me a bunch of questions and I will reply to you. 88%. 88% really want to know what you what's in this noggin. Oh, too much. Too dead much. No, it's dead uh, so this is recorded live. Um, <laughs> <laughs> recorded in the studio, but you're not seeing this live. Hey. Uh, so yeah, so a bunch of you have sent me some questions. Uh, I haven't read them, uh, so this is all pretty much new for me. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna answer them live. If I don't know the answer to a question, I will tell you. Uh, I might try and work it out if it's complicated enough and my little brain can figure it out. Um, but there's a lot of stuff up here and yeah, if you wanna know something, I can. Well, the beauty of what we've done as well, so we did an online form. So rather than like you guys obviously comment, you know, put the questions in the comments, we thought that could go messy. So we did a blog page and they filled out a form. So if there's anything that you're not too sure of, or you can do it off the top of your head, like you know the answer off the top of your head, but it needs a bit more research. We have their emails. So okay. you can then drop them an email and go, right, this is what I said. So yeah, there's basically a backup. And also it means as if we actually got quite a lot of questions, if you don't have enough time to film them all, you know, we can email the responses as well. So okay. everyone, you know, everyone should get a question, whether it's hopefully in the live video or in this video. Stop saying live video. <laughs> hopefully in this video, if not, yeah, we'll, we'll pop them over an email with their, with their queries and stuff like that. But yeah, you know, obviously this is the first time we've doing it. This, this is going live on Saturday, so hello. Hopefully everyone's having a lovely Saturday. Um, and if you guys enjoy it as well, as I say, let us know in the comments. If we could do this every month, that'd be quite a cool thing, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, I'd enjoy it. Out. Yeah, so cool. far so good. All right then, let's get on with the questions. I'm your taskmaster. They probably don't know what that is. <laughs> um, I apologise now. I'm going to butcher. Well, you, you, everyone knows that I'm not very good with names, so I'm going to butcher a lot of your names. I do apologise, but it's just what it is. <laughs> Are you ready, Mark? Let's go for it. Okay, I've given you. I've selected a nice, easy one. So the first one is from Luke Wilson, and he says, "How do you deal with the beard whilst diving? <laughs> Does it not break the seal mask?" And before you answer it, mm. his beard's fake. I have to edit it in. He's, he's actually smooth, like a baby. <laughs> and I have to put it in. in Movie magic. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so facial hair. I think I have done a video on this. Yes, um, if there is, it popped up. It's just popped up. So there's a couple different ways. Um, the, the first one is to get rid of it. It's not an option for me. Um, the second way is to shave just a tiny little bit just on your top lip, so that way you still have your moustache, um, but you do get a more effective seal. Third way is to use some kind of sealing agent, uh, like Vaseline or kind of a lip seal, uh, just kind of over the top, that creates an effective seal. Or you can use a, a certain mask. I dive with a, um, an Atomic Venom Frameless, which has a, a very soft skirt and that seal Yes, it does kind of leak a little bit, but we're all taught how to clear a mask um, sort of in our very first course. Yeah. So, hey, you get you get a little bit of water in your mask, clear it, it's fine. Um, that's actually quite handy. If your mask is fogging up, you already have a little bit of water in there, just kind of look down, swill it around, clear it, and your mask is clear. Cool. So, it's never really a big issue. If I'm diving on a CCR, um, then yes, it's quite important that you don't break the loop, so yeah, that will come off, um, but that's quite rare that I dive. I want to see that. I want to see with just the tashless mark. Everything else is there. It's just that that bit's gone. That would be so weird. <laughs> but then I think it would also look a bit weird with Vaseline. You look like a bit of a weirdo. Yeah, Vaseline touch. Anyway, I hope that answered your question, uh, Luke. Yes, thank you, Luke. So the first, next question, not the first one, is from Heather Cowboys. And she says, hi, Mark. How was your first scuba diving experience? Was it spiritual? Spiritual. Uh, it wasn't spiritual. My first ever scuba diving experience was at high school uh, with Flight Lieutenant Wellborn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're so posh. <laughs> In um, my high school, we had to... That someone would chuck bricks in, like get that. We um, that was really good because it was it was in it was in the pool, obviously, and uh, there was a whole bunch of us. And he taught us how to use all the equipment, and then we basically did some drills where we take our BCDs off, and there'd only be this is the one sort of drill that really sort of sticks in my mind. There are about I don't know six of us, including the instructor, but there are only like three BCDs in the pool. Oh, okay. So. We, and it was basically an exercise to work on sharing. 
Mm. And you'd have to, so only two people could be breathing off a single um, unit at a time. So, but there was like not enough second stages for everybody. Okay. So, someone- Are you sure this wasn't like natural selection? Because <laughs> it sounds- I survived. Um, and yeah, so one person would have to swim two different BCDs, and if you saw someone coming, you'd have to take a breath, sort of pass it to them, and then go to another BCD. So it was good for airway, sort of management and control, and all that kind if, of stuff. Oh, if I was in there, I'd just swim away with the BCD. So, mine, see you later, you can, you can die. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, Did you? Yeah, funny that. <laughs> It'd be a bit of a different story if you didn't enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be here. Yeah, <clears throat> I know, i will be talking to someone else. Anyway, I hope that answered your question. Sounds sounds lovely. Yeah. What was the Colonel's name? Flight Lieutenant. Oh, sorry, Flight Lieutenant. Well um, born. Yeah, still a good friend actually. Yeah. Yeah. So would you would you credit him for your first? Like, like it's all because of him? Maybe I didn't actually become qualified until well after that, after university. Um, but yeah, that's really what sort of your first. Yeah. In the pool. Cool. All right. Let's roll on to the next question. Uh huh. Sorry, the iPad was messing up. Islam, I'm going to say Z. You're very good at this. Don't look at that. Islam uh, Ziad. Islam Ziad. See, I still need you. <laughs> so he says, "Hi, I'm a wreck diver, and I'm about to replace my jacket BCD with a wing one. My diving is 90% warm water, and I don't use much weights. Approximately eight is that pounds? I'm guessing pounds. Yeah, eight yep. pounds. Um, I was thinking of the Aqualong Road, but since I can't try it." Uh, or any other brand, I need an opinion of an expert. Uh, I need your, yeah, um, so if you've got any other recommendations, what you think about the Rogue, and if there's any other recommendations, uh, help them out. So I'll, I'll step in, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Aqualung Rogue and, and its little brother, the Outlaw, they are good because they are um, sort of very customizable. I myself, I dive sort of backflip harness wing setups, um, even when I'm traveling abroad, because they're more robust and I want to find a better word than trustworthy. Um, well, you've already said it, so you might as well just <laughs> carry on with that word. Basically, yeah, I, I started off on very similar sort of wing styles like the Outlaw. Um, that didn't exist when I started. Um, but now I dive, it is Apex, which is like the sister company of Aqualung. It's the, uh, the Apex D18 wing uh, with an aluminium back plate and just a simple harness. And it's much more customizable. So I can dive that same back plate and harness with a twin wing and then dive on my twins. Um, but if I'm traveling abroad, it's nice and sort of lightweight. I prefer back plate and harnesses because they're more um, uh, they're just tough, they're universal. Um, if you do get a puncture, you can actually take the bladder out and repair it. Whereas with the kind of rogues and whatnot, it's a fine BCD, but if you're diving in and out of wrecks, the chances are you're gonna brush up against something rusty. Mm -hmm. So I'd prefer something with a, a sort of a tougher shell, which is what the Rogue is compared to the Outlaw, but still I'd be looking at um, sort of harnesses and back plates and wings, uh, like the D18 wing, you've got a separate outer shell uh, and then the internal bladder. So even if the outer shell gets cut or lacerated, your internal bladder is still safe. And even if you do get a puncture, you can take it out, get a bicycle repair kit and fix it. Or what you could do, like as cool cyclists now do, is get the gel. You just fill the bladder with the gel, so if it gets Simply cut. Scuba does not recommend this. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Johnson. I, I, I don't <clears throat> recommend it either. But yeah, cool. But what are your overall thoughts on the Rogue? Rogue, I do like the Rogue. For a recreational BCD, it's, it's the more direction that I push people towards, because jacket styles, they're just big and clunky, and, and there's a lot of pockets that you can't... Realistically, you can't get stuff in your pockets. Um, so it's supposed to have thigh pockets and a wing, even when you're fully inflated, it doesn't crush your rib cage. You get a whole wonderful sort of feeling of freedom with a, uh, with a wing uh, and they hold you in a much better position underwater. But Rogue is very nice, um, it packs down to nothing. That's one of the best selling points of it. You can disassemble it and it's tailored to you. You can buy it in small, medium and large, but if you're a big like weightlifter, you can have large shoulder straps, 
with a, a size small waistband. Um, if you're particularly short or particularly tall, you can have a different size uh, sort of back plates. You can customize it to your body shape. So it's really the new, the new way that I think a lot of more BCDs are gonna be going instead of your generic small, medium, medium large. large. Yeah, it makes sense. So yeah, I, I, yeah, I like the row. Oh, okay, cool. Cool, right, so the next question is from Christopher Brandenburg. In your opinion, what's the best training route for an aspiring technical diver? And do you have any training organisations that you would recommend? There's a lot. <laughs> there, there, there are so many. It's once you get to tech, it's it's very much different to your your paddies and whatnot. Um, it's more what direction you want to go, and unfortunately, it takes a bit of research um, and basically kind of go out. There, I mean, IANTD, they're a good group. Um, yeah, there's there's so many, but a lot of them tend to specialize. I mean, I particularly like GUE. Um, they're quite nice. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it, it's, it's not a single pill that will sort of work for everyone. It's whether you want to go deep, whether you want to um, sort of just extend your bottom time, whether you want to do sort of penetration or whatnot. Um, I think the first thing to do is look up sort of DIR and that kind of way and sort of organize your your kit and then kind of go to all of the different ones, talk to as many instructors as, as possible and kind of ask them sort of which direction you want to go and, and then they can sort of it's basically you have to gel with your instructor because you're going to be spending a lot of time with them, you're going to be learning a lot from them whilst they do um, sort of teach very similar things, uh, especially when you get to the technical level, everything tends to be a bit more universal, especially with um, sort of setups. But yeah, it's, it is a very personal thing. And um, I, I wouldn't like to sway you in one direction if it's not where you want to go. What we could do, I'll have a talk to you after we've shot this and I'll pin some links to some oh, yeah. organizations. Um, so yeah, just take a look at the comments and there'll be, you know, some, some pin links in there for all the questions, you know, for, for dive schools or if there's anything technical that you might recommend, yeah. you know, where it could be a bit more in depth. So yeah, we'll, we'll put them in the comments. Hope, that, hope that's okay. Right, so the next one is from Daniel Davies. Um, he asks, how important actually is a dive computer? I'm going to Crete on to do my first dive master in a few months, and I've been thinking about investing into, you know, my first dive computer, specifically the Sunto D5. Um, I've been, uh, he's been on about 50 dives now without one, apparently, and I'm not sure if I can justify spending the money as I haven't really actually needed one up until this point. Wow. That sounds... Uh, yeah. Um, so dive computers at that level are essential. Um, they, they basically, they make your diving a lot safer. I am impressed that you've never dived with a computer, um, I'm intrigued where you've been diving because in a lot of places it's essential that every diver mm. has a computer because if you lose your buddy, <laughs> you have no idea on your nitrogen loading. If you don't have the same dive profile, you have no idea on your nitrogen loading. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's that bell curve. When you very first learn to dive, you might have a dive computer on your wrist, but you don't really pay attention to it because there's a lot of numbers and you might not sort of understand what they all mean whilst you're underwater. You then learn sort of what it all does. Um, at Dive Master, yes, you need a dive computer because you are a representative of the dive community. So all the students that you teach will be looking at your equipment and going, huh, okay, he's not wearing a dive computer. I don't need to buy mm, a dive computer. Yes. Um, it's not, it's not a please buy a dive computer. It's more for safety because if something goes wrong, then yeah, your dive computer basically takes all of your tables and kind of does it all on your wrist. Um, and as soon as you move on to nitrox and all that kind of stuff, yeah, you definitely need a dive computer, especially at professional level. Um, yeah, I guess, sorry for putting yeah. in, I guess it's kind of one of those things where it's not like 
oh, maybe I should get one, or oh, you need to sell, you know, like we're, we're trying to sell you a dive computer, it's, you need yeah. it's an essential piece of kit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a piece of safety. Once you get to like uber technical range, a lot of super techie divers won't dive with a dive computer, but that's because they've been diving for so long, mm. they know their sack rates, they know sort of how quickly they're gonna breathe their gas, they know sort of their depth by their analog gauges and they can work it all out on the fly, but at 50 dives, you can't do that. You're right in that kind of stage where you, you feel like you know how to do everything and you feel bulletproof, but you're not. So you really need something to kind of rein you in. Um, but yes, uh, Sinto are good. Uh, the D5 comes out soon. Um, we think on the 18th of March. Because uh, it was the 11th, wasn't it? it yeah, we did Although hear the 11th, but oh, it keeps changing. Um, yeah. But um, any other ones? Because if okay, so if this chap's never used, uh, Daniel's never used a dive computer, is the actual D5 the best one to go for? It's so okay. If he's, never, if he's never had one, would that be the best intro for what he's also going on to do in the yeah. dive master? Yeah, so it's got a nice user interface, uh, very easy to uh, sort of understand the screen. It's watch style, so it's more that kind of sporty dive master mm. type. You're wearing it all the time. Um, I, I'm imagining that you're sort of fairly young and sort of getting into it, so you probably got good vision, so you don't need a large green dive computer. Um, yeah, I mean, I dive a sheer water. They're very customizable. That's the only thing that's sort of going up through the um, sort of the tiers of dive computers, as it were, is that Sunto, yeah, you can do a lot of sort of modification, but a lot of it's kind of locked out to you. So on the sheer waters, then yeah, you do have full customization of everything. Um, but yeah, D5, nice computer, very smart, um, does the job. But we definitely recommend everyone have a dive computer mm. because should the worst happen, you need to know exactly how much nitrogen is in your system because a lot of bad things can happen if you don't know. Do you remember when I was going to buy a dive computer just to have it as a watch? Yeah. Yeah, that was a big one as well. Yeah, it was. I'm so, I, I love watches though. They just look really cool. I'd spend all that money and it would like, oh, that's the time. Why is it beeping? <coughs> anyway, next question is from Levi. I'm going to need you. Ba uh, I want to say Batis. Batiste. 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 Oh no, you looked at it. Hello, Mark. Uh, what was your biggest scuba diving mistake you've made personally? Other than saying hello to me that one time and now you're stuck with me, if that's not really to do with scuba diving. Biggest mistake. Um, this is where he's going to say he's perfect and he's never had a mistake. No. Oh, he's thinking. Yeah, the it, cogs are... Uh, it's tough, yeah. Uh, Okay, so they're just watching, don't they? Yeah, I know, it, it's, it's hard on the fly. Um, so two things kind of spring in mind. The first one is uh, sort of equipment. Um, equipment regrets you, you buy something because it looks cool and you're like, yeah, I like that. That's all you do. I'm and a hiker, you don't buy it for the practical. You're gonna look cool. And then as soon as you, you kind of use it a few times and you're like, oh, actually, I, sh I should have bought such and such. Um, so that's... Probably my biggest. What, just buying the wrong equipment? Yeah, yeah. Is I'm, there something where you splurged, you splurged out on something and you didn't, re you didn't really need it, but you splurged out and then you're thinking, maybe I shouldn't have, shouldn't have bought. Is there anything in particular, like a dive computer or a knife or a BCD, or did you be like, ah, oh, this back plate, <laughs> I somehow bent it. I need a new one. No, knives, I, I bought too many steel dive knives um, and they just rust too quick for me. Um, so now most of my knives just titanium. Uh, I do have one steel, I do have one steel knife um, and you have to clean that religiously. Um, so that's probably the closest thing to a diving regret. Buying steel, well there you go guys, exclusive <laughs> knives. <laughs> As far as in the water, no. You've not, you've not had any, like, you fiddled with something, you've done, you've gone in the water and like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. I bumped into some fire coral before, that sucked. Yeah. I regretted that for about a month or two. You would have heard that on the video that got released. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, because it's, um, it was a drift dive and I was playing I Spy. Well, um, that's your own silly fault. <laughs> 
and I was looking around for something Quite and, it, cool. and it, was a, it was a drift dive and um, just brushed ever so gently my knee against some fire coral. I looked around, saw it and I'm like, oh no, this is gonna hurt. And for like a month or two later, I had this rash on my knee. <laughs> you hurt. deserve it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, it's a fire coral. Yeah. Fire coral. Cool. Right, next question is from William Gilliam. Uh, does the amount of dedicated time spent diving affect your experiences as a professional diver? I enjoy the sport, but I'd hate to become, you know, scuba diving a job. Any advice? Mm. Yeah, uh, so the more time you spend in the water, the better diver you will be. Um, because you are, you get first-hand experience on when things don't go perfectly. Um, if you're going on dives and everything works swimmingly, <laughs> Great, but, um, but then when something goes wrong, you have no idea how you're gonna react. Um, so especially when you get to the professional level, you're gonna uh, sort of be in charge of other people. And when something goes wrong in their minds, you have to be there to fix it underwater and be reassuring um, and stay calm. That's the most important thing for an instructor. So the more time you spend in the water, then yes, you, um, you, you do become a better diver. The one downside that you really have to avoid is when you get to the professional level, you have to separate your fun diving from your work diving. So it's very hard when you make it a profession like I have where you're dealing with scuba diving every single day and then when you get home at the weekend sometimes the last time the last thing you want to think about is scuba diving so you don't end up going scuba diving you don't enjoy it so when I first kind of climbed up the ladder uh, sort of up to instructor I went through a very long period of my dive career where I wasn't diving for fun I was just teaching um, which can be fun if you get the right students but you really need to just compartmentalize, separate that sort of side of your diving career, but still go sort of diving for fun. Um, and when you do get professional, it's quite hard to switch off mm -hmm. that kind of section in your brain that's always looking at everyone and looking for potential faults and what can go wrong. Um, it's not always up to you to, to fix everything. Okay, so the next question is from Benz. I apologize now, I'm not gonna pronounce your surname. It's a very nice surname. I just can't even, I can't even speak English, so I'm sorry, I'm just <laughs> gonna move on. Anyway, I would like to know your own dive gear, including accessories, for example, your DSMBs. Ha! Oh, right. So it's the Simply Scuba Regulator, the Simply Scuba BCD, everything's. No. <laughs> um, okay, so I have, I have three kit bags. Um, I have my, um, my cold water kit and my warm water kit and then I have my kind of grab bag that sort of works for both. Um, so inside my grab bag I have a uh, Atomic Venom frameless mask, uh, I have an Oceanic Shadow mask which is my backup, um, a snorkel I just have a uh, very basic, I don't even know the brand of it, but it's a flexible um, solid tube, no valves or anything because it's, it's more practical for um, uh, in water rescue breaths and um, and for snorkeling as an instructor you need good airway control so you don't need any valves uh, hoods I use the uh, fourth element I think it's a five maybe a seven mil hoods uh, that came with my dry suit my dry suit is a fourth element arctic with the Kevlar because it's breathable breathable dry suits man what is it with you in Kevlar especially it's no it's more because it was breathable uh, when you're an instructor, you spend a lot of time in your dry suit, especially on the surface, and it's nice just to have a breathable dry suit because you don't get clammy on the inside. Uh, undersuit, I use a Santi BZ400X. Um, boots, they're just a pair of rock boots. Uh, my fins, I use Apex RK3 fins, both in cold water and warm water. He has them in pink. Um, they're high vis. <laughs> <laughs> um, BCD, I use a DIR, um, style single piece webbing harness um, with a little A gear Harper uh, loop, which means it's a bit more uh, adjustable. Um, I use a DIR zone knife, which is a very short uh, little cutter with a serrated blade, very small but compact, and that sits on my hip. Um, back plates in cold water. Yeah, you regret asking this question now, don't you? <laughs> Uh, my back plates in uh, in the UK, I use a three mil steel stainless steel back plate. I don't know who made it. I did. 
What was the Apex thing you were saying previously? The BCD, when you were talking about the BCDs? That's my wing. Uh, oh. So in the UK, I use a D45 with my uh, twin 12s, uh, steel 12s. Um, Abroad, I use a D18 wing, which is real <laughs> sort of compact little wing uh, with an aluminium back plate. Uh, but I switched out all the D rings on my um, on my harness to titanium ones because they slide and they're really light. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but the knife is the same. Um, Wetsuits, I got a Fourth Elements um, Xenos, uh, so blue shorty. I think I've got an old waterproof Lynx 5mm full length wetsuit. I, I've got a lot of stuff. Um, that's all, all going to be sold on eBay. My, my regulators <laughs> are. Um, oh, yeah, your regs. Uh, so they're Apex. I've got DST First Stage, or I've got two of them for my twin sets um, with XTX 50 Second Stages, uh, and then I sort of swap them out. I use a long hose primary donate because uh, it's much safer. So I've got a 2.1 meter hose on my primary and then just a short little one and my Octo sits in a necklace so that way I can donate very quickly and effectively. And then all I have to do is just um, change it and put it on one first stage if I'm diving in warm water. That's cool. People are going to love that though. That's genius. That's the, that's the question. Sorry, carry on. My DSMB, which is the one thing that you actually asked me. They did, yeah. <laughs> um, so in the UK, I use a... Is it uh, the one with the Nemo head? No, I do love that one. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I use a closed cell, I can't remember the brand of it, um, but it's a, it's a long, long DSMB, um, sort of red or orange, depending on your preference. Um, I prefer a closed cell because they there's no chance it, even if you don't inflate it all the way, there's no chance it can deflate. Um, when I'm diving somewhere a little bit nicer, where the, the water's a bit calmer, I just have a, a small little compact DSMB. I think it's a Hollis. Um, it's a sealed cell again. You can inflate it from a, an airline, from your BCD or your dry suit, uh, or you can already inflate it. Um, yeah. Cool. I've had about five shaves since <laughs> that question. I hope that answered your question. So the next one is from, uh, I'm gonna need your, gonna need your, uh, Hathaway Connolly. Hathaway Connolly. Have you ever, uh, have, have you ever thought about coming into Ven? I can never say that word. Venquez in Puerto Rico. Well, then you've probably never heard of this place. Basically, have you ever been? Have you ever dived in Puerto Rico? I've been to Puerto Rico. And would you like to dive? I've never dived there. Um, sure. So we went from a really long question. <laughs> to, I should have thought about that one. When uh, I, I mean, I've been, yeah, I've been diving in the Caribbean. Uh, it, it was lovely. Yeah, that sounds horrible. Yeah. Um, I saw a cool eagle ray and uh, sort of followed that around for a bit. Cool. Um, but yeah, if I'm ever back in Puerto Rico, yeah. Check it out. Yeah, hit me up, let me know. So next question we have got from Kim Dean. So this question was rather a long one. Um, she explains about basically she's into her fitness cool. and she's finding it hard to get the right wetsuit. Um, what I'll do, I'll, I'll show you the question after this, and if you if you think that there needs a bit more in depth, okay, well, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll drop you an email. But you know, just to save some time. So Kim's question is: What female, obviously, five-ish mil suit would you recommend for someone who gets very cold but doesn't want the added bulk? And, and whilst I'm wishing for things, you know, she wants one that's easy to get on and get off, so. Uh, okay, so yeah, so two spring to mind. So the first one is the Bear Nixie. Um, so Nixie is a five mil suit. Uh, the neoprene that is made out of is incredibly flexible. Um, so actually you can even go like down a couple sizes and still get it on. I like um, the sound of that. I'm an extra <laughs> small, happy days. <laughs> Um, so very flexible, very easy to get on, um, but every single wetsuit will have a, uh, a CE thermal class rating, which is like a A, B, C, D, E uh, sort of grading. And basically the, the warmer it is, the, the better the grade. And the Nixie, I believe, has an A rating, which is the highest you can get, uh, and impressive for a five mil. Second one is the, uh, the Aqualung Aqua Flex. Uh, women's five mil, it's kind of got the kind of purple galaxy um, detailing on it, which is really cool. Uh, again, very flexible neoprene, very easy to get on and off. Uh, and again, it has quite a high thermal class rating. So always look on the, um, on the label of a, uh, a wetsuit, 
uh, it'll have a thermal class rating and it will have that kind of grade uh, sort of written on the inside to try and get the, the best that you can. Um, that's the best thing to look for. And just make sure it's snug around um, the kind of the entrance points, around the wrists, around the neck. Uh, other than that, it needs to be fairly body fitting because if you get uh, wetsuit that's too baggy, sorry, uh, in too many areas, um, big pools of water, uh, they're not, no good. Okay, cool. Oh, I hope that, hope that answers your question. Uh, next one is from Thomas Fox. I'm thinking about buying either a Hollis Elite 2 or the Scuba Pro XT or X Tech. Which would you buy and why? Um, neither. Okay. <laughs> Explain why would you buy neither of them? So he's wanted to get into technical diving from what I get from this. Um, the Elite 2 is kind of that hybrid between a recreational BCD, so it's what you recognize, um, but it's got lots of failure points on it, um, or break points, I should say. Um, Scuba Pro X Tech is, is too vague. That's, that's an entire section. That's the, all, all of Scuba Pro's X Tech. Um, but if you want to go down it, I'd be looking at like X Tech Pure. Uh, which is just a single piece of two inch webbing. Uh, it's a DIR uh, sort of setup. If you're thinking of moving on to tech, I'd, I'd bypass all that sort of entry level to tech and go straight to um, sort of your harnesses and um, uh, single piece harnesses. None of these sort of clever padding form things and whatnot because they all come with too many D rings. You only need sort of one over each shoulder and kind of one on your hip. Um, yeah, I think, to be brutally honest, you'll, you'll regret sort of buying that if you're then moving to the technical society. You'll be buying that and then you'll just be putting that away in your cupboards. So I'll be looking at, um, yeah, the sort of X-Tech Pure or, um, or something similar just with D-rings where you can move what else is What else is similar then? So uh, lots, as a, as a, as a yeah, brand, uh, so yeah. Apex do a really nice one uh, where you get all the hardware. Um, it is just like single single piece webbing harness uh, and a and like a steel back plate or alley if you're traveling. Um, yeah. yeah. If you want some customization, look at something like an A gear Harper loop. Um, it, it, it sits in your back plate and it's it creates a bit of movement in that strap, but without creating a break point uh, in that harness. Okay. Cool. Hope that helps. So next one is from Olivia Brown. Uh, where have you? Where has your worst dive been, or what was your worst? Or who was your worst student, and why? <laughs> so worst dive, worst student. Okay, worst dive. Probably off the south coast of the UK, um, and it is. It was basically. Uh, we went down this shot line to go see a, a wreck. Visibility was poor. It was only like a meter, if anything, and. Um, I was quite up for it because I'm, I'm quite secure with, with poor viz. Uh, my body wasn't really up for it, uh, so she called the dive and, and we both uh, sort of went back up. So it, it was just a bounce dive, if anything. Um, worst student. Um, I'm not going to mention any names because that's unfair. Is it Fred? No, no. Um, it's people, people that are doing it that don't want to. Um, it's it's going to sound mean, but it's not my worst student in that kind of sense. But um, but kids who have to go through the courses because their parents dive, but they don't really want to dive. That's um, that's where I don't enjoy sort of teaching them. Um, and um, and bless him, this one kid, he was he was really honest. Um, I managed to sort of get him kitted up, get down to the water's edge, and I was like, right, do you really want to do this, or do you want to just sort of go home? And he's like, I just want to go home, so I was like, good man, let's head back. Um, others, yeah, it's, it's a spectrum. You get some that can do the skills, but they just can't swim, um, and just sort of other things. Um, too, too many come to mind. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh dear, all right. Let's move on. Yeah, swiftly. <clears throat> so next one's from Daniel Spencer. Uh, what do you prefer, twins or stage, and what's the advantages of them? You can you can twin and stage. Uh, I mean, I, I presume he means like side mount stage? Like I guess just that's, that's, side that's mount. the question there. So what do you prefer, twins or stage? That's the advantage of them. Um, 
So I dive twins because I dive in the UK. I have dive side mounts. Uh, it's very flexible, which is fantastic. Um, but in the UK, you're, you're wearing gloves, you're doing a lot of clipping, it's a lot of gear. Um, so it's not the easiest in the UK. I just sling my twins on my back and that's it. You've got gas for days. As long as you can reach that, um, that pillar valve, you can isolate it. Um, but you can still dive with stages and twins. Um, there's nothing stopping you from doing that except mounting points. Um, in the UK, yep, twins. Uh, abroad twins as well, unless you're trying to get somewhere complicated uh, and restricted access, that's where side mount comes into its own. If you're diving out into the open blue around the reef, side mount's a little bit of a pain. Um, but if you've got a bad back, it's fantastic because you can jump in the water without your stages and clip them on if in the water. If you've got a bad back, you wouldn't be jumping. <laughs> you can climb down the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Diving with twins and a bad back ain't great. Okay. Um, especially steels, because they're heavy. Uh, personal preference, man. Um, yeah. I dive both. If I'm diving recreationally for fun, I dive with my twins. So rec diving or whatever, recreational diving, twins. If there's anything more complicated, yeah. look, at this, look at the sides. It, they are safer because your valves are right there. If you can see something go wrong, you can go, oh, and switch it off. So as far as flexibility and sort of safety and redundancy, mm. side mount's great, but I just don't like it in the UK because of the dexterity. Okay. It's, it's tricky. It's fair enough, it's fair enough. Hope that, hope that, hope that answers your question. <laughs> so next one is probably from your number one favorite fan, Joshua Smith. Hello. Mark. When diving with sharks, is there a difference in their behaviour based on whether you're diving using open circuit with bubbles or a closed circuit rebreather? Um, I would like to know your thoughts on this matter. Yeah, um, I mean, my my original background was sort of animal behaviour and whatnot, so um, so yes, um, you get so much closer to marine life with CCRs because you're quiet, there are no bubbles. Sharks despise bubbles um, or any kind of turbulence, they just stay away. Um, whereas with a CCR, a lot of the times you're pushing them away because they're more kind of intrigued what you are, they do get a lot closer. Um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, that was very, very short for you. <laughs> so yeah, rebreathers. As soon as you see a shark's pectoral fins go down, um, that's when they're upset. And also, as we learned from that Daily Scoop of News, if they're hanging around you a little bit, you're their dinner. There you go, that's my input to that. Anyway, so the next question, swiftly moving on, is from Pete the Handyman. Apparently he's very handy. Um, what's your favourite brand of gear and what do you like about it? Uh, I mean, you can be like very specific or you can be like, right, so masks, I tend to go to this, BCD's this. Yeah, I what, mean, I... What, what is your loyalist brand first? What is, yeah, what is like... It's tough. I mean, I dive with a lot of Apex gear. Uh, I dive with a lot of Shearwater, because uh, I trust them. Uh, Fourth Element. Scuba Pro are a great kind of all-rounder. Uh, if you want to kit yourself all out in one brand, it would probably be um, Scuba Pro. Um, but Apex is probably the one that really hits the nail for me. Just there. They're at that tier, they're super reliable, they're really easy, um, and you know what you're getting. There's no, some brands, they'll make their regulators, they'll overcomplicate it, um, where you can have sort of one part of a regulator doing one thing, they make it into three, and it's just more failure points, whereas Apex are just simple, they do the job, um, and they're, they're tough. Okay, cool. And also Apex as well, they're coming along because of the, uh, was it the R3 or the RK3s? RK3. They're doing a lot more accessories, which, no, that's a little spoiler to one of the Daily Scuba News is that you'll see next week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, okay, cool. Yeah. So Apex all the way, basically. If you want to say safe, if you want to go head to toe, Scuba Pro. Yeah. But yeah, if, if you, yeah, other than that, Apex. Yeah, oh. they're, yeah, they're the two brands that stick in my head. Okay, so this one is a really, really long and complicated question. So it's from Jeremiah Allen, and it's, uh, what's your favorite entry BCD? Uh, Aqualung Pro HD. It's a, it's a jacket style, so it'll be similar to what you've learned to dive in. Um, it's, it's tough, it's kind of got everything that you need, but not too much. Uh, it's got your integrated weights, it's got your pockets. The, the material itself 
is um, it's a clever material that doesn't discolor even if you um, sort of leave it out too long. So a lot of BCDs, they'll go brown really quick, mm. uh, especially if you leave it in the sun. Uh, whereas this one kind of resists chlorine and, uh, and kind of resists all that uh, kind of color changing. Uh, so yeah, I'd be looking at the Aqualung Pro HD BCD. So there's one more question left and we've whittled it down. So one person, we're gonna obviously say their name, but we got a lot of questions asking you this one question okay a lot of questions okay but we're gonna we're gonna yeah we're gonna so this one the name that we've picked is from Raphael Ottoon Ottoni Ottoni uh Ottoni Ottoni okay Ottoni so he says Mark first off you're awesome mm, that's debatable <laughs> but sadly the earth is not flat <laughs> Uh, okay, so yeah, so this came from uh, this came from a joke a while back that became a bit of a running joke that I kind of regret. Yeah, um, not a flat earther. I, <laughs> you are. I've been around the globe. I know. Do you mean you've been to the corner to corner? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's an, unfor an, an unfortunate joke that. Um, unfortunate. Yeah. I, well, no, it's more because now afterwards it's more like because uh, I'm kind of not promoting it, but just kind of like creating a joke out of it. Whereas actually we just need to ignore these flat earthers. It's, it's no. not a real thing. The earth is round. Every other celestial being in our galaxy is round. Why would this one be flat? Um, yeah, it, it was a joke. Uh, we, we played on it. We're probably not gonna do it anymore. The, the jokes <laughs> got a bit. All I'm gonna say, so yeah, obviously you, you, when you script the list of videos, you see you put yep. the flat earth jokes in. I have a tendency of putting like the little hashtags on there <laughs> or like even the video, the, the, the urban legends that I did, I put a joke in about you being a flat earther or not being a flat earther, <laughs> and then a quick screenshot of Mark is a flat earther is on there. <laughs> and also as well, as soon as someone comments about Mark being a flat earther, if you got a reply from that, that was me <laughs> saying that he is a flat earther. So I also have, you know, it's kind of my fault as well. Yeah, no, we, we can confirm. I'm not a flat earther. Yeah. I don't think anyone here is. But I do not believe in space. That's the, that's the next thing. So yeah. Anyway, there we go. That's it. That's the final question. Mark's a flat earther. Uh, yeah. uh. <laughs> Uh, obviously, if you've got any more questions, if you want us to do it again, let us know in the comments below. Um, we might even do it live. Yeah, so obviously, uh, what was it? So when we did like our thank you video at the end of last year, you know, we teased or we've, we've mentioned that we really do want to do live feeds and we'd love for this to be live. It's just ironing out the kinks because obviously a lot of you guys are from the States, when you're in bed, we're awake. When you're awake, we're in bed. So <laughs> it's it's one of those things where we're iron out. So this is gonna be the start of it. Um, if this gets enough interest, then yeah, then we'll, we'll, we'll definitely roll out. And it won't just be YouTube, we'll do it on Facebook as well. So yeah. if you're not a subscriber, or if you, you know, you found, you know, a, a way to hear from that, you know, if you're not subscribed to our channel, you know, you can always watch it on there as well. So it will be across two paths. But yeah, seriously, if you guys like this video, if you want us to make it monthly, please let us know um, and, then, and then we can roll it out. As I said, the more yeses we get, the more seriousness we can, you know, yeah. roll out to get in this anyway. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've got a lot, of quick, uh, lot of answers in my head. Yeah, it, it would be lovely if you could let, you know, we could do this to let some steam off of you so then I don't have to hear about it. It would be nice. Let's be honest. They were quite good questions, they were, actually. Well, that's also that was a good calibre. That's also why I, I recommended to Sarah, who, who obviously you see on Daily Scuba News, who's in charge of our um, social media, and she wrote the blog with the with the form. That's the reason why I also did the form, is because then you're per it, like, the question is personally going to you, because the problems we have with putting, like, it, it, it's fine, you can put, because some of them questions were in the comments, but if you no. get something that's too in depth, you might not want to put that question on there because you don't want other people to then jump on board and be like, no, you're doing this wrong, you're yeah. So with yeah. the form, as I say, it's, it, it's more of a personal question to yeah. you. So yeah, as I say, it, it, it seemed to work out. Well, did you guys enjoy the form or do you want to post your comments or your questions, sorry, in the comments? Yeah, as I say, let's know, let's have a conversation about it. And yeah, if, if this gets enough views, enough likes, enough shares, do it again. Do it again. And I hope you guys haven't minded that. It's probably about seven hours long. <laughs>
Anyway, guys. Thanks for watching, guys, and safe diving. More importantly, Stay classy, scuba divers. I'd, I'd be diving safer. We are an online dive store serving the UK and the world for all your diving equipment needs. So why not visit us at simplyscuba.com or click the box on your screen.